Hello and welcome to Writing with Steve with me Steve Evans. In this video we're looking at your second draft and how to edit it. In the last videos and if you haven't watched those yet please check them out. In those videos we've been looking at proofreading and editing the first draft. So by now you've probably been creating more clarity you've been making your writing more coherent and you've been losing some of the excess words, particularly those words that don't move the story along. Now we're going to ratchet it up. We're going to take it to a further level. So we're going to edit this draft until it becomes your second draft. However, it's not the same old, same old. Editing the second draft will give you opportunities to add texture and nuance to your story and it's a lot of great fun. So how are we going to make your story richer? Well first, as you read through your draft, I want you to check for recurring patterns, recurring themes or recurring symbols in your story. Now you may or you may not be even aware of those themes until you read them. You may or may not be aware of the symbols until after reading through your draft you actually start to see them and you start making connections. So you may or you may not be aware of these recurring themes or recurring symbols until you're editing the second draft. Stephen King famously was unaware when editing Carrie of the recurring theme of blood. Only when editing the second draft of the book, of the manuscript, did it become apparent to him. And he noted that blood recurred in three key scenes of the manuscript. Once he noted that, he looked at themes and ideas and associations with blood. It's symbolic, it's uh, biological connections and he then returned to Carrie and shored up those themes and added additional information and built additional scenes and added additional sentences and paragraphs around the key ideas of blood and the symbolism of blood. So editing your second draft, check for recurring patterns. Patterns that you may or may not be aware of, but you actually see during this process. So it's really interesting and really fascinating part of the editing process and totally different from editing your manuscript the first time round. If your story was driven by an idea then perhaps you have already highlighted and signalled some of those themes. However most writers write from a situation and that situation drives the story along. So you may not be aware of those themes and editing a second time round will help you greatly in recognising them and then signalling them and running with those themes even more. So check your first draft for recurring themes and symbols. If your story is idea driven then it's highly likely that you've already started to flag those ideas and symbols. For example, I should imagine Virginia Woolf when she wrote To the Lighthouse already had in mind the lighthouse's many symbolic and thematic associations. Whereas Stephen King found them in his second edit and riffed with them to add nuance and texture to the story. Okay, let me give you some concrete examples. So if your story is one of redemption, sacrifice, 
execution, even a resurrection of sorts, then you may be in the territory of Stephen King's The Green Mile. With that theme, of course, you may then revisit the names of some of your characters. So in The Green Mile, one of the main characters was John Coffin, JC. Hmm, wonder where we've heard those initials before. So, in the same way as adding symbolism to shore up those themes, we can also use names. So we've got the JC, and again, one of somebody coming to save mankind from destruction, redemption, and resurrection of sorts. Well, we're with John Connor, and we're in Terminator territory. So names are also something you may want to consider in your second draft. And if you don't discover any themes or symbols, no harm done, all well and good, just move on because story comes first. Okay, what else is different in the second draft? Well, this is the perfect opportunity to trim your word count. You may ask by how much, and I'm not going to give you a wishy-washy answer. I'm going to be precise. I'm going to precisely tell you by how much to reduce your word count. So if you're ready, I want you to write it down on an envelope, on a postcard, in a journal, on a post-it note, place it by computer, on your laptop, carry it with you at all times, even tattoo it, tattoo it here on the palms of your hand. Ow! Here's the formula. Second draft is first draft minus 10%. Yep, that's it, short and sweet. Trim 10% from your first draft. Tell the story with fewer words and include only words that will drive your story along. Any lazy ones, and you know who you are, show them the door. Do you really need adverbs or as many? Do you need to make some things clearer? Like who is saying what? And do you need to remove unclear antecedents and pronouns. For example, will your reader understand what this refers to or it refers to and which she or he is speaking? Edit your work to make it as reader friendly as possible till you're left with as much coherence and clarity as possible. So you may be wondering what time are we talking about between creating a second draft from the first draft? My advice is to lock away your first draft for six weeks. Just leave it. Don't be tempted to go back to it and do something else. Maintain your, your journal, your diary, do some short writing, do anything but go back to your first draft. After six weeks, then return to it. By doing that, you've created some distance between you and the manuscript. The manuscript will highly likely read fresh. It may even read as if somebody else has written it, somebody other than yourself. Sounds weird, but it's true, that happens. I've been there, uh, other writers will tell you that's what happens. It's like you're reading somebody else's work and that is fantastic because sometimes we are precious about the words we use and we find it really difficult to murder your darlings as Sir Arthur Quiller Cooch uh, put it. But we do have to do that. We have to do some serious pruning. We have to really work at it and we have to bring into play all those aspects of editing the second draft I've just described. So once you take out your manuscript after six weeks, try and read it all in one sitting. 
If you're unable to read it in one sitting because of the length of it or time commitments, then try and read it in as fewer sittings as possible. If you want to refresh your memory on how to complete your first edits, don't forget to check out our two earlier videos on proofreading. Okay, so if you've just discovered this channel and this video and you're wondering where are all the other videos that I've been referring to, well, you can find them on our playlist. This video is one of several we've created which is taking you through the planning, the writing and the publication process. So don't forget to check those videos out. I hope you found this video useful. If so, don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button and ring the bell. I'd be really interested to find out how you're getting on with the planning and the editing process. So please drop me a comment and I will reply to you. Until next time, write well.